I had, I had another question here. I, I remember when we originally talked about what you were going to talk about in Bangkok, you talked about getting funding for the business and how mm-hmm. when you got some, because it's, it's kind of rare in this space, I think. I think most people have this sort of Russell Brunson idea of, uh, of bootstrapping and, you know, saving up some money to get some ad spend and make it happen. But when you're building a full apparatus, a full, you know, a full platform, a, f- a full network when it comes to um, providing products like this, uh, you know, your investment was, it was obviously a great idea, but you said that you didn't always make the best decisions with, with the funds that you had when you, when you had them. Uh, and can you talk mm-hmm. a little bit about that period of having this fund and talk about some of the, some of the, the, maybe the mistakes that you made while you had this, this venture back capital while you built this business? Yeah, I think, uh, investors are, uh, venture capital can be a great vehicle, but I think, uh, the point of venture capital is to uh, do something that can be done in 10 years, but do it in two years, right? So you're actually encouraged to sort of spend that money and it's either going to pop quickly or it's not. But that is all just sort of a fallacy uh, and it's kind of how you you treat you treat it mentally because as a new venture, like for us with jewelry on demand, no one's ever no one had ever done it before. We didn't necessarily know what we were getting into, but we were sort of, um, I think some of the mistakes I had made back then were like just hi- uh, uh, sort of hiring up really fast without having the uh, all of our profit margins down uh, at the time and sort of doing the doing the structure and and, and the uh, and the budgeting and all that stuff properly and just uh, rising slow. Like we kind of came out of the gate really, really fast, throwing money at solving something. And, you know, maybe that was a little bit inefficient. Um, but as an entrepreneur, I've sort of learned to, um, that, uh, slower can be better in some certain circumstances. Yeah, I got you. That, that, that would have been an interesting period. Part of the, part of my talk in Bangkok too, is, is going to be about raising venture capital and basically, uh, the two the two main metrics that you need to know uh, in order to raise venture capital. I think it's a it's a great topic. It's something that you're right. Very few people in our industry do, um, but it can be a great mechanism for your business. So I hope I'm excited to speak to everybody about it there. Very cool. Now, uh, I alluded to this a little bit earlier, but one of the reasons that I think we hit it off is we we, we were we, we ended up talking a lot in Barcelona about. Uh, I don't know the not the spiritual path that we were on necessarily, but the sort of the things that we were thinking about and the things that you know the way that we perceived the world in a way. And I wanted to just do a check in on you know you you had told me a really interesting story about um, about how you had tried to remove all stimulation from your life for a period of time in order to really sort of uh, you know be be conscious of, of of who you are and and what you were trying to do. I wanted to just get a little update on where you were at in terms of your consciousness these days? What are, what are some of the things that you're exploring that, that sort of like, that, that, that get you excited? I mean, man, there's, I think myself, but like all e people, you know, whenever we get that sale or that Shopify sort of sound going off on our phone, like that's actually, that's releasing dopamine. You know, go, go look it up on Google. Like anytime you're using your smartphone, like that's, that's releasing dopamine. Uh, not only that, but, you know, caffeine and, and even like things like loud music and, and of course, like alcohol and, and all that stuff. So we're sort of living these lives that all the all these sort of stimulations, they really add up and um, it sort of desensitizes our brain to things like dopamine. And we need more and more of it just to feel good and, and actually just focus and have like a normal day. That's why it feels so good if you take a uh, two or three days off, your focus is much better because your, your brain physically has actually reset. Um, and so, yeah, this, now I'm feeling pretty good. You know, I, uh, I try to do healthy brain habits as much as possible. And maybe that'll be part of the talk in Bangkok, maybe not, but I, I will jam about anybody uh, on that at any time. Um, but uh, dop- dopamine reboot reset, I call it, um, I like it. which is kind of just going going cold turkey on every sort of bad habit you can imagine. <laughs> it, it is because it just sort of cascades. It's funny. It's like, every, it's like, you you know, even as you're doing these things that you know are not always the best for your brain or, or for your, you, you sort of have this in the back of your mind that like one day I won't do these things. One day I'll be, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be, you know, 
uh, you know, I, I won't be dealing with this, but you don't, you just sort of cascade on and, and, and they, they pile up over time. So I can imagine taking that reset break could be, could be a powerful experience for you. And, and for you, it particularly was, I think the quote was, man, after a few days of this, I saw a puppy on the street and I just started laughing and crying. And I was like, oh, that sounds so beautiful. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, and this is actually in a book, uh, I have a chapter in a book called three billion under 30. And um, I talk about this, but yeah, I, uh, after about six months of going cold turkey on everything, yeah, I could look at a puppy and that, that was like the most amazing thing. Uh, you know, I would literally, I couldn't.